Uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Combat Chatters podcast. And this week we're going to be going over the previous week's main event on the UFC card, as well as touch up on the influence of boxing. Uh, not too much time on that though, as well as the upcoming UFC card, 296. Indeed. 296 indeed. Taking place in Abu Dhabi. Should be interesting. It's quite a big card actually. Um, a lot of uh, lot of unexpected changes, positive changes mm. to an extent. But yeah, so it should be really good. Anyway, if you'd like to start us off then. Yeah, well, I think, first of all, I, um, you went on the podcast last week, so I just want to get your thoughts on what was your first reaction when you saw, obviously, the co-main and main event both stepping in on the... I think it was the same day, wasn't it? So what was your first reaction when you woke up and saw that? Because I think they released it early in the morning here. Uh, so it's really interesting. Um, these are fights which were going to happen at some point or another. Hmm. I don't know if it's in the best interest of Usman as well as Volk to have taken it on such short notice. However, saying that they are both elite fighters, both world-class fighters, one was pound for pound, uh, best world at one point. So, both have been. Well, exactly, exactly. And um, it's an interesting one, really. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it in the sense that I don't think that the outcome is going to be as, 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 as good as it would be in for both fighters respectively, um, if they were to have had full camps, I Not feel like yet. it's quite um, they're gonna it's gonna be they're gonna have a massive disadvantage, particularly for Volk in particular. I think Volk's I think really gonna Volk struggle. Usman. You think so? I think so. Obviously, we won't get too far into this now because we've got the main event to talk about later and the co-main. Um, but yeah, I think they're both they're both at this level. They're gonna be ready to fight, and you know it's exciting. I think. But although we would have loved to see them on a full camp, the changes for the card, I do think are overall better fights, in my opinion. Oh yeah, definitely so. But um, we're going to touch on first, we'll get this out of the way, because it was an absolute, it was an absolute shit show, if shit we're honest. Show. Um, Harry, what was your thoughts on the influence of boxing that we watched on the weekend? Bro, I was expecting a little bit more, uh, so much more actually, if I'm honest. The only the only fight that actually looked like a proper boxing fight was the Waleed and Dean Dean the Great fight. Yeah, they're good it, On the whole, whole card, Dean the Great is like, he could be touching mm, pro boxing. Yeah, like, I he think could both. Be. But both of them could yeah, be, but Dean, Dean the Great showed, 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 showed it in that, in, mm. that well, in the last weekend's card. Yeah. Um, <laughs> going into the main events Jesus Christ they both like you said shit shows horror to watch what about the uh, Dylan Dennis one what did you think um, of Dylan Dennis I, I knew he weren't going to win but Logan looked like shit in that mm. as well in my opinion probably to roid it out of his brain to actually yeah. fight <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry to say it but it's probably the truth mm. um and KSI Tommy, to- uh, I was expecting way more from that yeah. too. Tommy looked like an influencer, like an influent- yeah, definitely. Yeah, I- influential boxer. Mm. He didn't look like a pro boxer. He looked like crap. He yeah. he held on KSI and wouldn't let him move the whole fight, which was poor because, in my opinion, if he'd went out there and fought the fight that I think he could fight, he would have sparked KSI out cold. Yeah, uh, I mean, I overall, I do agree. I think... Uh, my first thought on the main event was just Tommy looking like I mean I, you know me I've stuck up for Tommy's yeah possibility, you but... have I've, I, and, I've, and I've put him down mm. like quite a lot in the past I've always I've always questioned him as a pro boxer yeah but um, I think the main thing that stuck out to me is he looked amateur the way his shot selection he didn't fight behind the jab at all uh, I was really disappointed with Tommy. I think KSI, even though, I mean, he was... You can't expect too much from KSI as well, which is why it looks so bad on Tommy. Mm. Like, because you can't expect anything from KSI. He hasn't beat yeah, anybody. Exactly, exactly. And and the people he has beat, one of them was a apparently professional boxer that he knocked out with an elbow. Yeah. And the... And, and the, other, the, the, other, the other boxers have all been YouTubers or people that... Are, nowhere near nowhere near the level that KSI has shown he could be what what about you Phil you, were you impressed by the jump that KSI could make between obviously fighting these influence boxers to actually arguably won that fight in a lot of people's opinion it's one of these things um, with these fights you can only really expect so much I think the KSI Tommy fight was particularly disappointing not because of the outcome or how poor it was but just we didn't see anything from KSI not because I don't think he was trying or not because he wasn't doing the right things he wasn't able to Tommy's a fighter which he doesn't jab and go for a clinch 
typically that's not typically how he fights. Mm -hmm. There was Which such was a why it came such a shock that he fought that way. There was such a opportunity for him to really show his boxing ability to a different audience, perhaps mm. an audience which may not perhaps watch as much mainstream boxing, who are more interested in the influence. And he fought very poorly, and it wasn't really necessary either. This is a perfect opportunity, and it's a shame because. Overall, his performance wasn't great at all. It was not one of the... It may have been one of the better performances on the card, only because the card itself was very poor. Overall, with a couple of exceptions. Mm. However, yeah. overall, it was very, very disappointing. Um, It's influenced the boxing, though. Yeah, I can't be too disappointed, really. And the thing is, a lot of these fighters... Um, I say a lot of these fighters, a lot of these people who are competing in this aren't people who have been training for years and years. These are people who might have started training for this one fight. Mm. And it's it's all for, for fans, it's all for the um, people who follow them. And it's very much, it's it's just to sell, mm. really. It's, it's a big event to sell, um, so you can only really expect so much. But overall, it was very poor. What disappointed me the most about it was that the fight is you expect to be very good, with the exception of the fight on the, I believe it's the main card of the prelims, when you mentioned her. Um, yeah. ov overall, uh, the technical ability of the good fighters wasn't on the best display. Mm, just wasn't no. on show, and then that's what made it disappointing, and the antics as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, at the end of the day, it is YouTube boxing. There's always going to be the antics about it. That's what makes Every, it. That's what makes it. That's what makes it different mm, to definitely. to to professional boxing, and that's and that's also uh, some of the reason why it's grown at mm. the rate it has, because people love. <laughs> the antics yeah. they love chaos people thrive for it mm. I think we saw that with uh, Dylan Danis bringing I think like it's, um, yeah it's been leaked that they've done a 1.3 million pay-per-view buys which is, is insane that is incredible that is nuts if they've done 1.3 mil I mean that's comparing to Conor McGregor's type numbers. Pay-per-view was not cheap either. Let me tell you, no. it was not cheap. I don't want to. I, I don't even want to imagine no. what the American people, like what the Americans were paying for I it, because it's, it's so much more money over there yeah. than what it costs for us to watch it here. In America, it was fifty dollars. Yeah, and we fight. watched we watched it for twenty, but we had to pay for the DAZN subscription mm. as well. So, but I I suspect they have to pay for that also as yeah. well as the pay-per-view. They probably get on like ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after then you have to pay for all of that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fergal, so uh, Dylan Dennis calling for the UFC now. He's been said so Dana White, you know, he's, you can see what I do selling fights. We know he's kind of world class jiu jitsu guy. He never won a world championship at black belt. I think it was only brown belt level, which is still insane. I'm not taking anything away from that. Um, didn't look great in his two Bellator fights, but won quickly by submission. Do you, are you interested at all in seeing him in the UFC after all of this? So, to be completely honest with you, um, it's very hard to judge because he's fighting in a boxing match and we all know he's not a boxer. Mm. That's not what he is. He's more of a mixed martial artist than he's a boxer, um, definitely. Uh, like you said, he's competed. And uh, he's very, very high-level jiu-jitsu. Brown belt in jiu-jitsu as well is not like brown belt in other martial no. arts. But being a brown belt, you are very much world-class. Mm. The black belt isn't what you have to be to be world-class. We have these blue belts, brown belts, mm. up-and-coming blue belts. Uh, to see him in the UFC, how much he would sell, he might sell a lot, but I don't feel like there would be as much as he would sell in these influencer yeah. events. Can I have an input on this after... And I think that with this, I don't think it's a, I don't, I don't think it's a good call for the UFC, and I don't think he'll be getting any um calls. I can't imagine Dana White's particularly interested in him. Mm -hmm. Looking at how he views a lot of fighters who do come up, he um he doesn't he wouldn't want to sign Ben Askren for a while, and how much of an opportunity that was obviously yeah. it flopped. But if he doesn't want to sign a world class talent as he was at the time, like Ben Askren with what he was doing in one FC, absolutely tearing it up. He's not going to want to sign Dylan Dallas. I don't see any real benefit. And he gets smoked as well. Mm, yeah. He gets smoked. No matter if that's the end of it, really. What about your input then, Harry? What, what you you sorry, yeah, no. I, sorry to butt in. I just, uh, I was literally going to say the same thing. I think he would, he would go in there. He would go in there acting the big Dillian mm. Dennis that he is. Yeah, and he would get smoked. 
And I think it would be a similar, uh, like a, almost a bit of a similar comparison to how CM Punk did in the oh, UFC. That's harsh. <laughs> really, not not really though, because CM Punk's still very well well known for his fight knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah, but. but he came into the UFC off of his massive contract from the WWE and all I think, that. I think you can compare it more to the Ben Askren one because yeah, there, yeah, there's class that in too. actual some fine aspect. With yeah, that, yeah. To be fair, that's probably a better comparison actually. Okay. What you mean by the CM Punk? The, the CM Punk because that. he came straight in and just lost all of his things and like he came in, but CM Punk. N- Believed he was a mm. brawler, he could fight, and mm. di- I don't think Dillian really does. I think he just loves loves the chaos more than he does fight, in my opinion. So, like he loves the jujitsu side of things, mm. but the minute he gets touched by anyone, he's gonna he's, he's gonna tough, fold. Though. He is tough. Yeah, you gotta give him credit. Tough. He was. They, yeah, he was shots. taking some big shots yeah. from Logan as well. To be fair, but like, I mean. Again, how hard can Logan really hit? We just... Yeah, not hard. <laughs> like, it's not like no, Jake J- Jake hits mm. harder. Jake's the harder hitter brother there. So, Fer, when you said you kind of see Harry's point with this CM Punk thing, what, what, what do you... So I think that's harsh, but where are you going with that? So, I'm not talking about necessarily ability, but if you look at CM Punk, he came from a very much an entertainment background. Mm. And mm. I feel like Dylan Dallas is also coming from that entertainment background. I think... The technical ability of Dean Dallas maybe well is most slightly higher than CM Punk. Not yeah. just not to disrespect, him, but CM he Punk. is um very much. I'll disrespect CM bet- Punk. Yeah, but yeah, no, you're not fair enough. <laughs> he gave it a gave it. He gave um, it a good go, and for someone for in the like someone who's done fake fighting, mm. they're not real. Well, not it's not necessarily not real. It's just like scripted. Yeah. It's not like you don't know what's going to happen when you go in there. I do feel like though Dillian Dallas, maybe if he were to fight in some of these lower circuit, low, lower, I suppose, lower skilled championships and uh, organisations, he may potentially be able to get himself a shot. I mean, there's no reason why he can't work himself up to win something like a contender. See, I, mm, but I don't think it's a signing. I'm it's kind of signing. going in a different direction with it than you guys because. Dylan, when he was in Bellator, he was this big up-and-coming prospect. Everyone was excited about his MMA career. And he had the two knee injuries that ruled him out for four years. He's now going on 31 years old. Which is prime. Yeah. Which is a fighter's prime, too. Exactly. He's in his prime ages now. If you put him on the regional scene, you know, and the hype sort of just gets killed off or he loses some bum... Why not for Dana White, sign him to the UFC, have him fight a Kevin Holland in a fight night or a Neil Magny in a fight night like he called out. And it, I think that uh, someone said someone said 10, 15 minutes ago that they didn't think that Dana White would sign. Mm. Uh, but Dana loves any fight that will make him <laughs> lots of money exactly. and the company lots of money. So I, I, I have to disagree there, but... Like as a fighter, like as, he wouldn't look at him as a fighter and say, "Yeah, I want you. You're gonna be, you're gonna be a top level prospect." But he would look at him and think, "Yes, you'll make me some money, yeah. so I'll get you in." That, that's where I was going with it, really. Like he is just a cash cow, and if you can, just, if he can get a win over some sort of a top fifteen rank guy, and then just slap him into a pay per view against maybe someone in the top seven. On oh, this is just mental. Me even saying this, like. I, I'm not advocating. I think Dylan Dennis isn't a great fighter. I think he gets smoked by most people in the UFC, but he makes money and he's entertaining. I mean, tell me you weren't entertained during the whole build-up when he was dashing microphones at people and calling oh, them and Give yeah. me the box and most build-up. Yeah, yeah, they do that purposely. I yeah, agree with you, Fergal. Remember the do. Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor? Yeah, it did. It, it, did like, it did have a little... Yeah, it felt, like, like it felt a little bit like old UFC... Yeah. But, dashing balls at each other. Really. Yeah, but then again, Dillian had to take it one too far and smash a microphone over Logan's that face before the fight. Crazy. So that that's the added thing that you get with you influencer can boxing. In you can't do that in the yeah. UFC. The fight will be cancelled mm. immediately, and you'd probably be cut. Yeah, Definitely you'd yeah you'd cut. be cut from the UFC yeah. immediately. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah did it impair so, Logan? Though I mean, can they all fight? Well, I mean, he walked away with his f- wobbled backwards and a face cut. So, like, it might not have impaired like impaired him for the fight, like yeah, caused it. him any damage. But in the moment, that was like they the UFC wouldn't have wouldn't wouldn't have taken any chances there. They would have just stopped the fight. Yeah, but I think 
But like Fergal said, they're doing that just because it's influencer boxing. Yeah. Like that's that's the aspect that 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 brings. Mm. I think it's embarrassing personally. It is. Especially it's embarrassing to boxing. boxing. Yeah, it is embarrassing to the sport. Of boxing, I think really. boxing, to be honest, it hasn't been embarrassing itself for a few years now, and I hope that triggers every boxing fan listening to this podcast, mm. if there is any, because yeah, you know, it's just. MMA's taken over, and I've, we've been saying it for years. I'd much rather sit there and watch LFA or CFFC yes, than I would rather than 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 watch one of the biggest boxing matches coming up. I, I, I actually I, would with most of them. I stayed up, stayed up till quite early in the morning the other weekend, just watching. I'm not maybe maybe a stream, maybe not a stream of the Jamel Charlo and the Canelo fight. Mm. These are meant to be two of the best fighters in the world, and I'm I fell asleep fell during asleep the third round. It. it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, and th- this is a good segue because we'll jump into the main event from last week. How that's Edson Barbosa at 37 years old. So he's fairly, oh, way he's, past his prime ages now. Yeah, as, and as fairly come in as a youngster, and the show they put on Edson Barboza with a comeback win, obviously after getting dropped badly in mm-hmm. the first round. How impressed were you with him, Harry? I was incredibly impressed with with both of them. Yeah, in my, with both of them, in my opinion, and um, I bringing up the knockdown that you mm. said early on. Yeah. I think I may have. I, I may have thought. I think I. Um, I think I predicted uh, a knockout. Mm. So when that happened, that early knockout. So when that happened, I was like, yeah. "Boys!" <laughs> and then, uh, uh, and then, obviously, he came back to his grasps. He got back to his grasps and came back into the fight and put on an absolute show for all the fans to watch, and possibly a fight of the year. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's action packed. It's definitely up there with some mm. of them. So, do you think they got the decision right? I should jump straight into that. So, I'd say yes. Yeah, I if I'm honest, um, I think that it's hard to call because it was a very close fight. But I think it was just aged. Mm-hmm. And overall, though, very exciting. And Edson Barboza to do that at 37. Mm. That is beyond impressive. He looks. He's it's obviously he... not in his prime, but he doesn't look like somebody who's 37 should be fighting like that. No, no, no. Especially in the UFC, especially against Sadiq Yusef, he's done a very, very tough up-and-coming. I thought Sadiq Yusef looked so impressive. The shots so he was hitting Edson with. Yeah. He, he, like, and I said that, right. that was one of the things that I said. Mm. He's got some incredible power mm. in his hands. And for Edson to be to have the amount of punishment he's taken, to be cut into 145 now and to still take them shots, and get back out, and we saw him knock knock uh, Yusef down with the um, you know his will kick. He's got mm. so many people <laughs> that in the UFC. Yeah, I honestly think yeah, it sounds a bit crazy because they should, Ed- they should name that after Edson really mm. now. I yeah. mean, should, I mean the, yeah. they, they named the Showtime kick mm. after Pettis because he was the first person to do it. Edson uses the will kick so much they should probably name it after yeah. him. <laughs> I think um, this this sounds a bit crazy, but. Edson's kind of inconsistent. Sometimes he shows up and looks like that. And but if he fights like that, I think he can go on a little title run at 145. Still at this yeah, age, yeah, after definitely. all the punishment he's taken. I mean, after the first round, probably a 10-8. The second round, he was kind of recovering, so it was still close. He started schooling Yusef. He started using his wrestling as well. Yeah, and that's a young killer. Sadiq is a killer on a free fight win streak. Yes, Sadiq Yusef jiu jitsu as well. Yeah, he, it's fast something else. Think, we didn't see very like, much of it, but it's so so high level. Mm. Uh, there was that submission, and it was like it was a very fast one. That was his last yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, leaped on his back was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was nuts. But um, he's not somebody. He's somebody who's very dangerous in this wrestling as well as on the ground. And um, Edson Barboza, he looks really solid overall. Um, a title run, I could see that, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, he is at that age, though, where I don't know how if he could have enough fights. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's he, just time. He would have a time, yeah, time, and he'd like... Well, not necessarily, because um, we've seen people... We've seen people win win belts mm-hmm. at, at that age or older... I think Matt Serra. I think Matt Serra when he came back and won a won a belt, mm. he was think he was like forty two or something. Randy was he Couture not? Was like fifty. Yeah, yeah. Randy Couture was like fifty or something mm. strange like that. It's got, so people do do it, but it's yeah. unlikely. It's very very much unlikely. But like he's a healthy, he's a very very healthy yeah. fighter. Clearly. He lives. Yeah, he lives and trains, and he lives for training. Mm. 
Like he's one of them, and that 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 could give him more years in this sport. It just depends on the fights that he takes and the damage that he takes yeah. going into these fights. It's about a division though as well. Yeah, with, the divisions with are rank, With his ranking, what is he? Thirteen, twelve. Yeah, yeah. You I know, think he, he was fourteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, he's gonna have a very hard time climbing yeah, up to a championship. I you agree. Know, have he'd have to have at least six, seven fights, mm. minimum, before even. Look uh, at against these four, I'd say yeah, no, four, I was with that, with that three division, or four more that division. If he got three more wins in a row, and one of like, say, he got two two more wins in a row, and then fought someone who was high up in the ranks, who 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 fought. Okay, he's mm. he's on a bit of a run now, he's a bit of a tear. That jumps him a lot of spots if he beats mm. that person. My only concern is that when you get to that top seven, top eight, you can yeah, it's dangerous. Everyone. Then. Really, Look, like, say he wins one more. Well, we've seen him chuck them in, though. Yeah, we have seen him I'm chuck them say. in. Say he wins one more. Brian Ortega's ranked number three. I think he's won two in his last five. And, you know, he hasn't fought in a, a year or two. If Edson wins one more, it calls out Ed, uh, And he's got the name. Yeah, exactly. It calls out Ortega after one more win. He could jump in that number three spot. Max Ho And then, what, you're looking down the list, who hasn't Volkanovski beat at that point? So, mm. you know, yeah, you never know. So yeah, in it they're always going to put on a fight that Ma mm. that, that Volkanovski hasn't yeah. hasn't walked through exactly. as well. So like, I agree with you there, Finn. But it's like he's still got a long way to yeah, go. He does. And, he does. You know, he he can be knocked out. I I was so shocked with shot that he he ate those shots because we've seen him we've seen him kind of fold under less pressure than that. You know. The blueprints there to beat Edson Barbos. You mm. get in his face, you make it ugly, but he lapped that up and he gave it back. And if he fights like that, I I just think he's such a hard fight for these one forty five and he's such a big guy. Yeah, he's so he powerful. By yeah, and by the by the time by the time they've weighed in and, and rehydrated he's and massive. everything, he's not one forty five no, anymore. He's one sixty, mate. Yeah. He's gonna be half he's gonna be mm. nearly fucking double the size of the other guys. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> not think, literally, but <laughs> Yeah, I, we got we got a big card to talk about this week. So um I think we should move on to that. There's some fights we're gonna brush over we'll concentrate more kind of on the main card but there's a few fights we want to just sort of touch on i think the first fight yeah it's a bit weird that they've matched this up on the fir first fight of the night um shara bullet obviously uh scary dude making his ufc long-awaited ufc debut against bruno silver who i think he's got like 30 knockouts in his mma career so this one's got banger written all over it uh what's your original thoughts on this then for so this is a really interesting fight. Um, like you said, it's very, it's I think it's the first fight in the early prelims, mm. which is really interesting because Bruno Silva is a fairly accomplished fighter yeah. for him to be this low on the early prelims. Although there could be a reason behind that. You know, I suppose it's a good fight to enter. Yeah, definitely. And it's a very exciting one. I'm more like to see a finish mm. happening in as well. Uh, Shara, he's it's interesting because um he hasn't been. I don't feel like he's been tested enough yet. And this is a really big step up as well. Bruno Silva is, he is like you said about his record. You know his record. Um, who he's fought as well. He fought Pereira yeah. a little while back. Um, stylistically, I think this is a really good matchup. Mm. I think that they're both really tough kickboxers. Um, it's hard because it's. I like to think that Sharon is just so tough. He'd be able to, because I can see loads of kicks happening, loads of yeah. kicks because striking. I can't see very much groundwork happening at all. Uh, Sharrod's defence is so good his clinch work as well he's so strong in the clinch uh, but I think overall this is going to be a really interesting and exciting it's really it's, it's, stylistically this is probably one of the best matchups on the card I think Yeah. because if you look at the two of them they're kickboxing both kickboxers are really really high level they're both very aggressive as well which is very exciting they both kick from up close almost in the pocket mm. And uh, Sharrod's got some, he's got some nasty knockout power, but so does Bruno. So I, I don't know how this one's gonna go. Um, I think, I think if I'm honest, I think Bruno's experience is gonna definitely gonna impact him better. And I think that just competing on a stage like that, Abu Dhabi, it's it's a big stage to compete at. This is probably the biggest event which Sharrod's ever. Yeah. Four out. Well, it is. You the know, last fight in, like it was in a pub. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and it's interesting. Uh, he's he's four. He's four in all these different organizations. Mm. Like, he fights in loads of different organizations, like you know Russia and. So um yeah, but I'm looking forward to this. It's pretty mm. exciting. The level of MMA competition that Shara Bullet or Shara 
Putin is it all? Putin. Cheese gravy chips. I don't have to know Putin. Shout Putin. Car, is he related? <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, God. Um, anyway, um, I feel like the level of competition, like Fergal was saying, that he's been fighting in compared to the UFC is going to be massive. Mm. This is a huge step up for him. So it it does almost just come down to whether he is at the level that people think he is or or whether it's just because he's fighting bums. So obviously when a guy's got this much hype coming into the UFC, I kind of do a background check to see what's been going on. And there was, uh, at the start, a few alarming things pointed out to me. I think between the years of uh, 2020 and 2021, he had four exhibition fights. Mm-hmm. Exhibition fights are just weird to me, but... You know, he's he's a little bit in professional MMA. The last guy he fought before he comes to the UFC is yeah, is seven and eleven. But I think eleven. (laughs) That's what I mean, bro. The level of competition jumping up from there to the UFC is going to be Mm. shit scary. Yeah, (laughs) but he does have an extensive kickboxing career as well. He's uh, obviously not fought no massive names in that kickboxing sort of run he went on, but. It looked very good in that, and you can see his array of striking. The some of the knockouts he has on his highlight reel is just insane. And Br- to be quite honest, Bruno Silva has not looked the same since that Alex Pereira fight. I think he's on a two-fight losing streak. He got dropped by Gerald Mershart when Alex Pereira couldn't drop him with his le- with his left arc, left hook. Gerald Mershart did it, and he got dropped by Brendan Allen, who come on, let's be real, isn't known for his striking abilities, and then finished too. And with a guy with 30 knockouts and such great kickboxing pedigree, when they go on that decline and start getting finished, it's worrying. And I think someone coming in undefeated, fighting in Abu Dhabi is pretty much the home of these sort of Dagestani fighters. Now, we heard that in the press yeah. conference. Um, I think, in my opinion, it sort of all leans to him. It's a favourable matchup and a big name to fight in his UFC debut to sort of generate a lot of hype. And I, I see him getting an early finish. I only go... I'm going to go second round TKO early, early second round. I think he's just got too many weapons. He sort of starts the fight slow and he likes going on the back foot and he just destroys your legs and then starts bringing the kicks up high. And I think that's that's going to damage Bruno Silva. Best way for a fucking stand-up striker to actually implement mm. their technique as well. Break them from the legs upwards. Yeah, exactly. Always. Break, that's the best way to break a, break a man down. So to grab a prediction from, from you guys on this one. I'm going to have to agree with you. I think second round TKO, I'm like you said, the decline. And once you start getting finished, more often than not, you continue to get finished, which is a shame, really. Mm. But it is just how it works. We see it with so many fighters. And the power, like you said, um, his head kicks are nasty. Mm. The roundhouse. Um, everything he does is nasty, really. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go second round TKO, Shara. Yeah. Harry, how do you think this one's going? Um, I'd like to agree with you boys, but that's that... There's just that step up in level mm. from fighting, fighting someone who's seven and eleven to someone like Bruno Silva who's recently fought yeah. Pereira mm. and people like that. So I'm I I I'm not gonna say that he's gonna knock him out because it's very hard to knock anyone mm. anyone from that region out. <laughs> so um, I I would say Bruno Silva on decision. Mm, that's a that's a big pick. Bruno Silva, I think if it was a few fights ago, I think this would be it. But I think the timing is just a bit a bit off. But. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you there, but I still think that step up in level. Yeah, he's I, not fighting he's not fighting someone he knows mm, from his hometown yeah. who just lives down the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, it, the, in that, that sort of sense. But I just think, you know, just the eye test. I mean, we do fall into the eye test as MMA fans, but... He is nasty. Honestly. Yeah, I do agree. He has looked nasty, but he hasn't looked nasty against anyone who has mm. done anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then, and if he proves me wrong here, that's someone we've got to yeah. look out for massively in the future. Yeah. So would you say you're not very confident on the Bruno Silva pick, but it's just kind of... I know yeah. what you mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, it's not... I'm not... I'm like I said. I've seen I've seen a little bit of, of this kitty, mm. and he looks pretty, pretty nasty, but... Uh, it's that step up in level. He's not fought in any division I've ever even heard of. Mm. So, and how many times have we seen these hyped fighters come into the UFC who've got a good highlight reel and 
just drown as soon as they get. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 the exact reason I I predicted what I predicted. Mm. I think uh, getting on to the next fight, we're gonna break down. We're gonna jump straight to the Nathaniel Wood fight. Obviously, the Englishman. Me and Harry saw him fight live. I uh, mean, my friend Kieran, sorry, saw him fight live in London. I wish I did. Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, put on a great show there, and he's fighting a monster here, Naimov. In his UFC debut, I think, yeah, Jamie Malarkey took the fight on about nine days notice and KO'd Jamie Malarkey in the second round. Uh, and it was a comeback win with no camp. A big power puncher and he, he's the bigger guy in there. I think Nathaniel Woods looked like he's kind of struggled with this weight class a bit. Well, what do you think, Fergal? So it's a really interesting one. I think um, I something which I like about Nathaniel Wood, uh, which I think he's going to do really well in this fight, is that his wrestling mm. and his just groundwork in general is very much superior. Naimov, he is a dangerous opponent, but you look at Nathaniel Wood, the way he shoots, it's very quick, it's very explosive, and um, it's not something which you'd ex- necessarily expect looking at somebody like Nathaniel Wood if you were to just look at him, you know, mm fast wrestler but um obviously he's also a very good striker as well but i'd say it's not to the degree in which the rest of his overall game is uh Naimofu, like you said he's he's very dangerous and he's a big power puncher i think this is gonna play to nathaniel wood's favor mm. i think that he's not quite fast enough he's not quite technical enough i think that he, although he has got very good technique it's not seen enough for it to not be read mm. And I think Nathaniel would take this. I could see a submission. Yeah. I could. Um, and for this one, I'm going to go second round submission. Yeah. Um, Harry, obviously, we, me and you both watched Nathaniel Wood's whole career pretty much. And he can be hurt at times. So how worried, his first fight. <laughs> how worried are you of Naimov's power? And, because um, he hits like a truck. <laughs> and, you know, na- na- like Nathaniel Wood, na- Nathaniel Wood has known to, like recover from a shot yeah. but he gets, he gets hurt. hurt yeah he gets hurt so it is a scary thing especially for someone that because i've been what i've watched him since his very first fight we watched him i think on cage warriors yeah I, I, yeah i think i definitely well I've been, i think i watched mcgregor in yeah, cage warriors bro i've been watching that for a long ass time yeah so um <laughs> Yeah, uh, but so it definitely concerns me about the power. But I, I do. I'm gonna stick by, and I think I agree with Fergal as well. I think he is just gonna be a little bit quicker, mm. and he's gonna drag him to the ground, and he could even get a sub. So yeah, I, I probably agree. But um, it could also very well go the other way, which is what I'm scared of. <laughs> I think Naimov, his takedown defence looked decent against Jamie Malarkey. Obviously, Malarkey's not known for his grappling prowess, but, you know, he's coming out on short notice. He, he, he's a prepared guy. He's, he was willing to stand in the pocket and throw down. Jamie Malarkey is a, probably a, a bit of a bigger puncher than Nathaniel Wood. Nathaniel Wood's not known for his power. Not known for his power, but he is. He's very precise. Mm. Very, very... He knows, knows how to hit someone on the chin. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I'm... I, I think I'm going to lean. I'm going to go Nathaniel Wood decision. I think, mm. you know, I do think he'll mix in the takedowns. I think he'll keep it on the feet as well because I think he is the faster man. Mm. So he's going to kind of pick shots, take him yeah. down when he can, and I think it will be a close fight. I think there could be a moment when Nathaniel Wood is hurt because that's kind of a running theme, and these featherweights look big compared to him. Yeah, he is small. He mm. like there he there's a, there's a possibility he should just fight at Bantam. To be fair, he just hated but it. He said he looks so think. much better here, and he does look well, better. He, he looks better. Power. He's just so much smaller yeah. than everyone there. So I'm gonna go decision. Did do you agree with first second round sub? I'm I, I'm yeah I'm. I'm gonna go for a second round and sub. I'm I'm saying he's gonna. I think he's gonna use his ground game a lot mm. more, and I could see a sub happening. But I'm not. I'm not 100. Yeah. percent But a sub could happen. Nathaniel Wood has definitely got the capability to do it. Yeah. And um, then we're gonna skip most of the prelims, jump into the other Englishman. You can't call us biased, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Mohamed Makayev against Tim Elliott. Hey, hey, he's not just English. Yeah, I mean, when you get a wig, when you get someone from Wigan and our lad down, from Wigan, yeah, <laughs> dangerous man. Yeah, uh, Boo, how big of a step up do you see this being for Makayev? So it's, it's a big step up, but it's something which needed to be done. Logically, it's it makes so much sense. Um, it's really exciting actually because I think that Tim Elliott is a really good opponent for um for Makayev. I think that Tim Elliott 
there are definitely aspects of him which can be exploited. Uh, something which is interesting about uh, Tim Elliott is that he's often, I feel like he gets a bit too comfortable in there. Mm. And that's something which you'll see um, trouble is with Mackay if you're not going to be able to just dog your shots and laugh at him. And oh, yeah. This head movement, or his head movement is very good. It's not going to work in someone like Mackay, someone who is very accurate and clean in their striking. It's an interesting fight. It's really hard to call. Uh, Tim Elliott's very tough. Oh, yeah. He is very, very tough, and I think that's what is going to help him out in this fight. But I'd like to think that Mikhaev, he doesn't ever... I don't feel like he fights fast enough. Mm. And that sounds strange, but I feel like he doesn't fight at a fast enough tempo. Really? <laughs> I think I, I, the pace he puts on... The, the pace he puts on, but he doesn't do it. He's not I know, aggressive. Yeah, enough. yeah I, I know what you mean. He, yeah, that's okay. That's not to say that he doesn't necessarily put on a massive pace but he just isn't consistently going after it and going after it and going after it and although in fairness that's probably not something you want to do against Tim Elliott mm. go after him direct and straight definitely not I th- like he'll shoot he'll just shoot he'll shoot on you I also think that it's something which he will need to do a uh, Tim Elliott if he catches you that could end very quickly but I'm gonna go to for this one for I'm gonna say Mikhaev yeah I think I think uh I think he'll use his stand-up a lot more in this fight. I think if it gets into a grappling exchange, I see this is where I do agree with you. I think the pace he puts on is he does try and drown his opponents, but I agree with you in yeah. in the Mal- in, I think in Malcolm Gordon fight, he found himself down. In the Phil fight, he found himself down, and he needed a finish in those third rounds to win. And he did get those finishes, but you know how long can that last when you're kind of down on the scorecards? And it's not because he looked like he wasn't better than them, because... You know, it's the positions he was getting dom- dom- he was getting dominant on some positions, but uh, he almost got knee barred in his last fight. We thought he'd be out for a while, but his knees are made of rubber bands, so he's <laughs> lucky. And um, I think this fight is going to be a grueling one for him. I think he- he's going to look to stand it, uh, keep it standing, but I think Elliot's the one of the only guys in the division who is just going to constantly shoot takedowns on him as well. So I can't wait to see the grappling exchanges between these two. Yeah, I was literally. Bust in to jump in early. <laughs> I literally burst in to jump in. I agree with you 100%, Finn. Um, Tim Elliott is known to jump in on any takedown opportunity that he possibly gets. Even if there's not a take- uh, takedown opportunity there, he can get it. <laughs> like a Darren Elkins. Yeah, he <laughs> is. He is. He's just crazy. Yeah. And crazy hillbilly. <laughs> we love that shit. <laughs> and... Um, Makayev can hold his own in that respect, yeah. as well, in that in that aspect as well. Mm. So I'm very very excited to watch them two grapple together because <laughs> I because th- I'd love to watch them both stand with each mm. other because that would be entertaining as hell as well. But it, them two grappling together is going to be like there's there's going to be some assaults and yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm hoping. Funny, <laughs> uh, what's your prediction? Oh God. Um, Oh, I'd love to be biased. I, I think Makayev. Makayev Mikhail. Mikhail might do it just because he's younger, more youthful. We've obviously seen Tim Elliott take quite a lot in his career. Um, I would, you know, what? I will. I will. I'll, I'll be optimistic. I'm going to go Makayev, but I don't think it'd be quite. I think it's going to be a bit more of a exchange. I think there's. It might even go decision. Yeah, I think so too. I think. He will look to keep it standing. I think um, Elliot's movement is so weird on the feet and Makai is going to be looking to set head kicks up off that. He's very accurate with his kicks and fast with his kicks, not so much with his hands, but let's be real, Tim Elliot isn't some world-class striker. He, there's one thing that he tries to do. Mm. And if he can't get Makai down, let's be real, Makai an elite, elite wrestler. He was winning championships in Russia where... He was bit, he's been a prospect to be a UFC champion since he was like five years old. He is built to be <laughs> built a UFC it, champion. Yeah, yeah he has so, been. Um, I think he has had some hiccups, but he keeps winning. He's got that mindset. He said that uh, in his last fight, everyone was saying he should tap because what's the point in risking your knee getting torn up for the rest of your life? But you saw with his mindset, he's willing to die to just get yeah. a win. And, and yeah, at that age, yeah, he's, like, yeah it's what he says is something completely yeah. different to what he has shown. Mm. I agree with that. And he's just he's such a young kid, and he, he, you can see the fundamentals are there. He's just going to keep improving every fight. 
and the wins he's got, although at the time they didn't look like great wins, look how good Cody Dur Durden and um, what was it, the last fight, Phil Al have looked since then. They 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 are elite fighters too, and they're both in the rankings now. So, you know, this, this is a great matchup, and I've got my kind of decision too. Jumping onto the main card, why don't, why don't you get a start, Fergal? Side Magomedov against Marin Gaff Gaffarov. Oh, so this is really interesting. Um, Said he's so technical on the feet, and it's interesting because you hear the name Nungu made of, you often think it's like wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Mm. Well, I mean, you yeah. shouldn't, but yeah, I do. do. Yeah, yeah no, I no, do. no, you do, you do. You think you think of you you think of someone who is going to sambo the hell out of you and just hold you there and oh, and yeah. make you pay. That uh, is one hundred percent what you hear when you when you when you see the name Nungu It's interesting though because we don't see loads of wrestling. No, and what we have seen of it isn't is that elite. It's, that's yeah, it, really. I agree. It's not to the standard of what, say, what is his brother or cousin? I don't actually think they're related. Uh, are they not? No, I, I thought they were. They've known they're each other since they were kids, but they've just got the same it's second name. It's so weird, though. It's it's quite I swear cool. he's got like two brothers in the UFC. Yeah, though. Does, does he not? He's got a cousin in Bellator who looks like he could dominate the UFC if Bellator right, does okay. too, but. There's a lot of them, but he's not actually part of the family. He's just wow. a really close friend. Strange. Yeah, it is. Some that is actually family trading camp. <laughs> it's some strange, strange thing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he was just like an orphan, and they took him on. <laughs> <laughs> now, but with the side fight, um, he's so technical on the feet. It's kickboxing. Something I feel like this card has a lot of in yeah. kickboxers. Yeah. And the yeah, ones they does. have brought are all really high level. Um, Gafarov. He's not wild, I wouldn't say he's wild at all, but he's very much a heavy hitter. Hmm. And a lot of these shots he throws are almost all heavy shots. Yeah. And I think that's something which Saeed's gonna. I think Saeed takes us relatively comfortably, if I'm honest. Um, I don't think he finishes him, because Gareth is a, he's a hard guy. He's a hard guy, but Saeed on the feet, I just think the leg kicks, the body kicks, I, I think he keeps his range really well. Mm. I think he manages the distance continuously, and I think he causes some real damage. I don't see him finishing him. I don't. However, I see decision, and that's how I'm going to go with Saeed decision. I think Saeed, in one of his last fights, he won, but I think it was a guillotine and fight like he was down in, so he has shown a bit more grappling. Uh, Gafarov, I think he was in one FC. Uh, he also has seven submission wins as well, so it could be very interesting if he can get Saeed to the ground. And you know we see him. We've seen him throw some wild kicks. I think he knocked someone out with a head kick before coming into the UFC. Uh, he he has shown to be dangerous in the striking department too. And I think Said sort of gasses out a bit if you can get in close and push him against the cage. And I think that's where Gafarov can win. And I do actually give him a decent chance. I think I am leaning more Said, but I think Gafarov has, has a good chance of winning this. Mm. Yeah, I I think I'd probably agree. Um, but. Again, Gafrov has a great chance of winning this. Saeed has has shown that he tires quite mm. easily. He he, it's not like like, and it's not like a tire where you see like Zabit, Zabit, yeah. like because he tires, but it, like he'll throw shit at you like he hasn't tired mm. at all. Whereas you can tell that it wears on yeah. Saeed quite a lot when he does get tired. So if Gafarov can can tire him. It could be a long day for Saeed. And I, I think Gaffer, Saeed sorry, looks really uncomfortable when you get in boxing range with him. He's very much just a heavy kicker. And yeah, he is. He spins way too much. I, he is a very technical striker, but... <laughs> it's like me on the like, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I bet you love watching him. <laughs> I do love watching him fight. I love, I love, that's why I love Zabit yeah. so much as well. Yeah, I'm pretty it, sure they've trained so what, together. It was like watching me when I was like 15 mm. years old, just spinning, kicking people yeah. in the face. Oh, I bet you missed those days. Oh, God, do I? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I agree with you, Fergal. I'm going side by decision as well. I think that's the safest bet. But I would not be surprised if Gaffrock can sort of get a third round TKO. I just think he's going to have a hard time getting within range. Yeah, I think the way he's going to manage it, especially with those kicks. Um, like you said, he's, he's uncomfortable up close mm. because he's such a heavy player. He spins too much. I, I think that is relatively dangerous if he gets yeah. up close. I think that... Gaffer could also cause some severe damage to Saeed if he does land, mm. but it's hard to get into that position. Yeah. Get, so now getting on to the next fight, uh, a very interesting fight. I'm, I'm excited for this one. 
We have we have uh, anchor. Uh, sorry, Ikram Eliskov against Wally Alves. Obviously, not the fight we wanted to see. It was um, Imamov that pulled out. But Aliskarov looked great in his debut. Who stepped in? Uh, it was Wally Alves. Wally stepped um, in. I mean, I, I don't mind Wally. Like, Wally's quite... Like, he can be quite a good fighter. Mm. It's just... um, Yeah, he's <laughs> not, not quite the name that Imamov's no. got right now. I think he is on a bit of a downward spiral as well. But, Phil, what's your thoughts on this, this late replacement? So, it's really interesting. Um, Wally, he, when he's... When he's pushing forward when he's aggressive he is very much in your face and he's so good on top on the mm. ground when he gets on top of you he can cause some severe damage um he's got very good jiu-jitsu but just his general ground striking when he's on top of you whether it be north south whatever it is he is landing strike after strike after strike and he hits very very hard um he's also very good on the feet as well yeah and the kicks he throws he throws them almost like it's one after the other what was the fight i can't remember who he fought where he just Last like five body kicks in a row, finished the guy. I can't remember who it was. That's but TK, wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That was a mountain like the corner of the octagon. Mm. He was just running him down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, but um, I think that he's a very dangerous opponent. Um, Aliskarov, uh, he's very good on the feet. I don't know what we'd see of him on the ground, how he'd cope with it. I'd like to think that he'd be able to stand his ground mm. well stand his ground on the feet um, on, the, on, the, on the ground that's, a, that's an interesting expression but I think I'm sure that he'd be able to uh, do well and maintain on the ground however I feel like with Worley I, I think that he's um, I feel like he's got the advantage mm. I really do I feel like he's gonna well you think Worley's got the advantage yeah I do I do I looking at me like that no but um <laughs> I, I I think the way he it explodes bits of him. Yeah. And that's what I think it is. And he, he just charges at you. And it's it's very hard to do anything against. And if you haven't if you're not the dominant grappler in that situation, which I don't believe he is, mm. then that's when it's dangerous. That's when he could be looking to get you down. Yeah, I think the the problem for me is I think he's thirty seven years old. He's on he's on a two fight losing streak. Mm. Yeah, he hasn't done well recently. And let's be real, the chances of him taking Alaskarov down are very small. I think, in my eyes, the only chance of him winning this fight is if he pulls a guillotine. We've seen him do that so many times. Mm. He's got one of the nastiest guillotines in the UFC. Or on us. <laughs> I mean, that's the one he submitted Kobe Covington with. But Alaskarov is just a sniper on the feet with elite takedown defence. Shemaev, they went three rounds and Shemaev didn't get one takedown on him. And so that just shows what sort of level of, gra- of sort of grappling defense he has, and for me that just screams out. I th- I'm going first round knockout for Alice Grove. That's how I see it going. Knockout. Mm. Mm. I think he's going to finish him quite early in the fight. Do you reckon he's going to first two minutes? Jump on him and drown him. I think just first two minutes of snipe him is. I think mm. Wally Alves is going to be hella nervous on the feet. He is decent on the feet, like he's not terrible. But I think Fergal, I think you're kind of thinking of Wally Alves maybe a few years ago because, I mean, he's slowing down, man. He has slowed down. He has. I I do still feel like he's got that in him. He's, he's dangerous. Just, yeah, he is. Da- he's a dangerous, dangerous guy. But yeah, he he has slowed down a lot recently. I do like Wally a lot mm. though as, as a fighter. Sick name he's, as well. Yeah, he's got a sick name really? too. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Um. So, are you are you going Wally Elvis? I, I am. I am. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. What do you? How do you see it going? I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go third round, finish. Mm. Wally Elvis. Submission. submission. Maybe strikes. Maybe strikes. <laughs> nah, oh, submission. Man. Submission. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might place that as a bet, you know, for a goal and see if I win some money. Guys, <laughs> please do not listen. If we're going to place any... Don't take any bet advice. <laughs> take any bet advice from us. <laughs> It'll be the first place, first bet I've ever placed in my life. <laughs> um, if, if it's my prediction, then just throw your money at it. <laughs> I mean, I've been the one on a roll in the last <laughs> I wonder what the odds are for Alves. Uh, I, probably I think he's not good. Well, <laughs> I'm underdogs. You love them, don't you? <laughs> so I hope to see that sort of energy in the main event when we come to that one. But next fight, the one I'm actually most excited for, uh, that's actually a lie, I'm not most excited for this one. Uh, I'm very excited for this one. Mohamed Ankalaev against the, the madman himself, Johnny Walker. Harry, let's get your thoughts on this one. Oh, God. 
um, Big Johnny Walker. <laughs> um, he's looked a lot. He's looked looked a lot more patient yeah. and and composed recently. He's he's well. He's been doing well. Five fight win streak or something. Is it right? really that much now? Yeah, I, I, see, I thought it was three. So it he, be three. I thought three. it was three. I'll have a look now. But I wasn't sure, which is why I said ish. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's been doing well. Um, he's obviously a very powerful. No, it is three. Sorry, it is, it is a three. I was right. Thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really know what to say on this. Mm. I don't. I really don't know what to say. Johnny Walker could quite easily. In do a madness, but he's been way more composed, maybe a little bit too composed mm, at some definitely. points. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't have much input on this. Do you, do, you know, do you know what I love? Yeah, Johnny Walker came into the UFC when John Jones was kind of just sort of ending his light heavyweight run, and everyone yeah. was saying, you know, maybe this is the guy who can beat John Jones. And oh, god, he, he, went, he went on a crazy run, and then things started going horribly for him, and he went to. Because he was just too confident, mm, man. He yeah. was too over, too, too over fucking zealous to, yeah. to fight. Him. And obviously, he moved over to the uh, uh, SBG gym in Ireland, training where Conor McGregor does. And like, if we're all honest, we all thought, "Oh God," because let's be real. Since since Conor's fell off, who has that gym produced? But they are improving, Johnny Walker. And if someone told me a year or two ago that me and you would be doing this podcast and yeah. we'd be struggling to pick who wins out of him and Mohamed Ankalaev. Because I think... Yeah, I mean, think... If, it, if, if, if he was fighting Ankalaev, say this was his debut mm. and we watched him on his debut and he ran in like the way he did and started doing the shit that he did against Ankalaev, he would be pieced apart yeah. very quickly. But it's not watching that fight anymore mm. because he has turned himself into a composed UFC fighter. Like I yeah. said, sometimes maybe too composed, but rather be too composed and win a decision mm. than than over over excited and rush someone and then get sparked out yeah. cold. And I think the main thing that sort of points out to me, I think fighting the tentative way he he has been, if he doesn't come out and do anything crazy. Ankalaev's not an output guy. He's a fast counter puncher with big power. But yeah. if Johnny Walker can kind of point point fight with him, he's got great leg kicks, which we saw Ankalaev isn't great at defending. The teep to the body will be there. The head kicks. He's probably the biggest light heavyweight in the UFC. Yeah, I'm, he's like two fifty. He should be. He should, he should probably just fight heavyweight. Yeah, but, mate. he's tall enough. He's big enough. He's. A, Strong, strong man, but then I don't. I think he'd get mauled by all yeah, of them. He would, he he'd would. be eaten alive by them lot. I just think it's crazy that I. I don't know what your shot, what shot you give him, Phil. But I think me and Harry both agree that this is when you see this fight, people just kind of think, "Oh, it's Johnny Walker and Clive that's going to smoke him." But this is not that Johnny Walker. No, it isn't that Johnny Walker. But Ankalaev's a dangerous, mm. dangerous, dangerous guy. So do you think Johnny Walker has made it? A more competitive fight for with it, like me and Harry think, or do you think, you know, Johnny Walker's suspect chin just going to get cracked again? I think I he has got a suspect chin. Fight. <laughs> I do think it's a competitive fight. I also think that you, you can't underestimate him, and he's not going to go out wild because I I know that he knows, or you'd like to think that he knows that doesn't work as mm. Ankalaev. That's how you get pieced apart with Ankalaev. Something which I I do feel like he doesn't do well enough is that he, although he's very active he's also feels quite static almost at times and the way he it's almost like he's stood in position yeah mm. and i think that's something which johnny walker can take advantage of if he, he is slightly a little bit more wild if he does throw some of his bigger shots and he mm. will take advantage of that too yeah. like he will take advantage of him standing in one spot you are 100 percent right mm. i think though with ankle I have, he's just got that bit more experience mm. and I think like I think Abu Dhabi's gonna play a big yeah. part in it as well. I think for this fight in particular, I feel like Johnny Walker isn't gonna be um necessarily a big favourite mm. in that part of the world, if I'm no. completely honest with you. And I think that it's gonna be very much an Ankalaya focused focused fight. Um I'm gonna go for Ankala, I'm gonna go for a decision. Mm. It's three rounds. Yeah, you know, I I think any longer it could very comfortably be a finish. Mm. Although it could also be a second round finish for Ankalaev. Um, I think Johnny Walker's going to do well. I think he's going to be contagious. But I think he's also 
just the, the striking and you see the accuracy of it. Um, and Kalive, he's not the most fun to watch. No. no but he's really. good. But he's good. Um, what's, what's your what's your opinion on this? Then? See, I've been I've been. Think- what's your prediction? I've really been thinking I want to go with Johnny Walker. You know, yeah, I think I am too. I I but think he really shouldn't win this. He night. should <laughs> no 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 on paper on paper Hank Lyev should, but uh, the way Johnny's looked recently, the how composed and the way the, and he he's a massive guy. Mm. He should not be able to move the way that he does. And if he implicates that against, and I think he will, because I, like Fergal said earlier, Ankalaev does like to stand on mm. the spot and yeah. just keep himself very fucking still. So Johnny Walker could just dance around him and pick his points yeah, all the fucking so that's night. That's what I'm That's what's been going through my head. I think he could just be a bit more active, and Ankalaev might get clipped early, and then just think, "Oh shit, I yeah. do not want to get hit by this guy." Because he's got power, yes. mate. He one like, punch could put yeah, anyone on the planet out. <laughs> Lich anyone on the planet, yeah. it could put out from him. He is. He's got serious power. He just. He was like he realized how reckless he was with it and stopped using it, mm. and that's the problem. Like he knows how to fight now, but he doesn't use any of his power, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. And we've seen him dangerous in every position. They finished Paul Craig when Paul Craig caught his leg from a kick, just hammer fisted him in the face. Uh, and I think Ankalaev. The thing is, he's just so perfect technically. Ankalaev is so. Is Johnny Walker going to be able to find these big shots? Ankalaev's never really looked like close to being finished with strikes to the head. Obviously, Jan Blahovic came close with the leg kicks last time out. This one's so hard for me to predict. It's so hard to predict, but I, I, I'm, I am going for Johnny Walker decision. I do think he's just going to stick to the outside and outpoint him, and Ankalaev's not going to be quick enough to get in on him. See, I think put a gun to my head. I'm going just the other way around. I think. It will, I think it's going to come to the end and there's going to be people thinking he won, no, he won. I, the, the only thing dancing on my mind is the fact that we have seen what Johnny Walker's chin yeah, can yeah. happen. So, yeah. like, if Ankalaev puts one decent mm. shot on him, he it's could over, quite be yeah. fin- quite quite easily be finished. Ankalaev's a hard hitter. Isn't yeah. It? So, that's the only thing that's set that, that, that is thinking, but I, that is, it's like... Bubbling in, yeah. bubbling in my mind and playing on my mind, but I do think that that Johnny's just going to be able to keep it on the outside. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go Ankle out really close decision. Uh, I was literally just until a minute ago going to go Johnny Walker decision, but I think the smarter, safer pick. I mean, I I was kind of going the flamboyant picks a few weeks ago and getting all of them wrong. <laughs> so I think I've been sometimes saying, you've got to do yeah, them, not yeah. every week. But you know, we still got a main event to call yet. So yeah, we're we, do. we do, we one. do, we do. We've got to, we've got two step in mm. like mains to call yet. So let's so let's get. I'm going to go and Claire. It's a close decision. Let's jump straight into that co-main event. That is next. I'm pretty sure. Uh, hopefully, we're not missing anyone. So, Kamara Usman stepping in, Sean Lewis against the guy everyone's scared of, apart from Bilal Mohammed. Uh, how do you think this one goes? So, this is, this is an interesting one. Um, he's taken this fight on very short notice. Uh, Shamara's been in Dubai for over a month. Mm. He's been, he's used to it, he's training, he, he's loving it. I think he's a move there now as well. Yeah, he's a phenomenal athlete. He mm. trains like a workhorse, yeah. I know that for a fact. Mm. But, He's still shown recently that he has got a gas tank and it does wear out. Mm. Wow. And Usman is one of them people that will quite easily put that pace on you yeah. and and destroy your gas tank. Mm. I think this fight, I think Shamar takes it, if I'm honest. Yeah. I really do. I think Usman, he's very good, but if fighting a fighter like Shamayev, there's somebody who Usman isn't all that good. I don't say he's not all that great on the feet because that's not accurate at all. Not no, recently. He's, he's not, got better. He wasn't. He's not a top level, high level striker. And I'm not saying that Shemaev is, but Shemaev is a very dangerous, threatening striker. His um his wrestling aggression as well, the way he. We've seen Usman get taken down now. We've seen yeah. Usman, he can be taken down. Shemaev is a very, very high level, aggressive. Um, Dagestani wrestler, he just kind of drags you, he can mm. grab you, he's powerful in doing so. And I don't think Uden really had an answer to that, I could be very wrong. 
but I think Shamayev is the type of wrestler a bit taller who he's going to have an issue with, especially in these clinches. Um, I don't think Usman's head movement is what it needs to be for Shamayev either. Mm. I think that he's just a bit too static. Um, this isn't bashing Usman at all, but he's a champion for a reason. Yeah. You know, but I think uh, I think Shamayev with the preparation, he's been in Dubai for so long, but Terry's on at the moment mm. as well, and just his explosiveness, not to say that, Usman hasn't got this explosiveness, not to say that Usman can't rag down him because he obviously can. Um, I think Shamayev takes this one pretty comfortably. I could see a finish. Mm. I'm honest with you, I could see it. Yeah, I this fight ends in a or, finish. I don't want to say second round because I feel like that's, that's, that's kind of disrespectful. Mm. Second round finish, but I could see second or third round finish. Shamayev, I really can. You know, that's, that's what I've been finding funny as well because... I've been, I'm so convinced Shamayev's going to win this fight, but at the same time, it was about a year ago, Kamaru Usman was being considered one of the greatest fighters of all time, and he was pound for pound number one, and you know, everyone was saying, Shamayev, wait in line for your title shot, well wait, and now, roles are reversed, it feels like Usman's coming and fighting the big man in Shamayev, He's, Shamayev seems like the kind of the bigger name right now. That all the fans are more excited for. Right? He shouldn't be though. No, but like you know, Usman's gonna slam him on his head. Usman's going to slam him on his head. I, I he might get the like. I don't think he. I don't know if he'll win, but Usman's definitely gonna slam that bitch first. <laughs> I, I I disagree with that very heavily. I think. I think. I I. Usman. Usman's so hard to take down. I think that's the big thing, but. Really, Shamayev's a better striker. I'm not like, but, but I think, know. yeah, oh uh, yeah. No, Usman's only just developed striking in the last four years, for Christ's sake. Really, I think Shumayev, like decent striking. Shamayev's got crazy speed and power, but he's susceptible. I, that's that's the last the, mate. His craziness and his his wildness jumpy in mm. sort of style of fighting is why I think Usman is going to just slam him on his head mm. honestly I'm not I'm not I'm not joking I I think Usman will just be a skill level higher I think he'll he'll be able to, like there'll be one moment in the fight where he just takes over I actually do and this that I might be a wild round. that might be a wild prediction that might be a wild prediction but Shemaev I don't know. Shemayev's crazy and he's got skill, but Usman is a composed wrestler. Yeah, he is, and you know he's been. And taken, he can strike now. He's been taken down once in his UFC career. Exactly. And if you look at the, you can never count him out. He's a dangerous guy. Like just because of what's happened to him, which was a shock as well. No one thought Leon was going to win that. Really, I did. you did think, but like that was just your biased pride. No, I was convinced, man. mate. It was your biased pride, bro. I'm telling you. I knew, I knew Leon was going to win. <laughs> but I think my prediction. I'm going same with Phil. Second round TK. I think Shamir is. Usman taking on short notice, the knees are giving up on him. Short notice is the bad, the bad aspect for this fight. And because, his knees are because Shemaev is always ready, mm. and Usman is known, known for, like he's he's got problems with his body. He's he's old. He's, he's, he's old. He's gone through these. Well, he's at the end of his prime career now. Like he's got the problems that that UFC fighters mm. face with their bodies. So that's the one thing that, but I still think that Usman will just. So what? what you just outskill him a little. Going to Usman. I'm going Usman. I'm going the outrageous call because I, I'm fucking fed up with the Shamayev reign. <laughs> well, Shamayev, you know the the reign hasn't even started yet. Wait till he. Oh, no, don't please! I hate him. I don't. Gonna... I don't I've never. I... I've never liked his cockiness since he came into the UFC. Yeah, I really have. The uh, the last wait. Missed it, put me off him a lot too. But you forget about that. He brings just pure chaos, and yeah, and he's fun to watch. He like. is fun to watch. So I think you've gone with the. See, I give Volk a better chance against Islam than I do Usman. Which really, is right. definitely, bro, definitely. Really? Look at the the first fight. Arguably, Volk won. Arguably, Volk is coming in bigger this time. He was, he's, and he's just. He doesn't have that respect factor that he's going to go for the kill. So he's been saying from the start, Volkanovski, that, you know, 
he didn't think he could really grapple, or he knew he could grapple with Islam, but he was very cautious with the grappling in the first fight, and now he he knows he can defend those takedowns, and he knows he doesn't have five rounds to break him on a full count, and he's saying he's going straight for the kill. First round, he's looking to start the fight where he left it off after dropping Islam and raining down the ground and pound. So he's going to look to carry that on, and I think... The most dangerous part of this fight, if Islam gets out the f first three rounds, I think he'll win a decision. I think Islam's just going to be ready for that one coming in as well. Yeah, like, but Volk he's... said Islam's going to know, but Volk is so good. Like, you can know he's going to come at you, but the switching stances, the weapons, the, the things that you can use, there's so many ways you can win this fight, and he showed that in the first one. I am still leaning Makashev, if I'm honest, but I, I would not be surprised with a big upset. What do you, what do you think, Fergal? So, I, I think Makashev takes us. I mm. don't think it's going to be super comfortable, but I think it's going to be relatively comfortable. Uh, Bolt just came back from an injury. He's taken on such short notice, and Makashev has been drilling this over and over again. The one... So, training in a camp against Oliveira... What what do you think he's training? Do you, do you think he's training what he'd be training if he were to be fighting Volk? Obviously not, they're different fighters. Mm. But stylistically, what has he put him a work in for? Uh, Volk's probably not been doing a lot on the ground. And he's probably had to be relatively cautious to an extent when it comes down to these powerful movements such as stuff and these takedowns. You know, a lot of stuff which is going to be... It was his elbow. Mm. So a lot of stuff which is going to be very much, you know... Just careful, strength, but maybe yeah. strength based mm. stuff from his takedowns, particularly. Yeah. Although a lot of that is going to come from your legs and your core. So, I think with this fight, Volk, the thing Volk has over, I'd say, almost any other fighter at the moment is that he is just so consistently high level and versatile in almost everything. Mm. He's very much, he's, his stand up is his best attribute. But we saw in the last fight against Makashev, he did very well on the ground. Yeah. I was shocked watching him on the ground. I had no idea he'd be able to do that no. against somebody like Makashev. Makashev is somebody you'd look at and you think, all right, well, he's a bigger guy. He mm. should be mauling him. He should be as he dominating. It almost very, should be very, a matter of when he, on the ground as well. Mm. It should be almost like when Makashev gets to the ground, you'd think to yourself, or I would anyway, that's over for Volk. Yeah. If I'm honest, yeah, that's what my first up. thoughts were. That's what I'd think, always saying that how he did in his last fight, he has showed that he has got that ability. To see if it's improved, to see if it's a st stay the same, Makashev's going to be very sharp going into this. His ground, his wrestling and his just groundwork in general, but his wrestling in particular is going to be very, very explosive. And to think whether Volk's had enough time to... Well, he hasn't, yeah. hasn't, has he? No, no, no. But but to just maintain mm. it, because to maintain what he did, although a lot of it's going to stay with you, you need to be doing it consistently for it to really stay with you. And Masha is going to be constantly improving. It's all he does. Mm. Or it's one of the many things he does constantly. I think Masha takes this. I think Volk looks good on the feet. I just think that's good for that sharpness factor. I also think we need to give Islam his credit. He looks, he's really good on the feet as well. Yeah, he's, no, he, like, is, he is. It was both, it went both ways. Volk came in and everyone was like, Volk will, will not be able to deal with Islam on the ground. And if Volk can keep it standing, Islam will not be able to deal with Volk on the feet. And, you know, Islam, until kind of the last, last round where he got dropped badly and maybe almost finished if there was a couple minutes left, he had the bigger moments on the feet as well. He never really put Volk in big trouble. I think Volk kind of hurt him more with the shots, but... You know, he dropped Volk to a knee multiple times and he showed his variety of weapons. His body kicks look good, his head kicks. He even landed a slip elbow at one point. I would not be surprised if Volk gets a finish on the if uh, Islam gets a finish on the feet. So it's interesting because on the feet, like you said about it, everyone thought that. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people are thinking, you know, Volk, what's he going to do on the ground? Same as Makshev, what's Makshev going to do on the feet? With Makshev on the feet, I think... I'd like Volk is going to be good on the feet no matter what, and he's going to be good on the ground. On the feet, with how Mashev is at the moment, the short notice, he's going to be contending with Volk, I'd say even more so mm. than ever than his yeah. previous fight, just the I sharpness, agree. and this is what I think is going to edge it. Mm. I personally think it's going to be a finish for Mashev. Really? I really do. I think it's going to be a sub. Mm. I think he's going to wear him down round after round. Uh, Volk has such a tank. It's 
ridiculous, really. Mm. But I think that just the fatigue of just the entire fight. I don't think it's going to be continuous wrestling, although I think there's going to be a lot of wrestling. I think there is going to be a lot of exciting yeah. exchange in the feet. But I think we're going to get to that fourth round and it's going to secure a submission. Mm. Probably from top, I could see maybe something like an armbar, mm. potentially. It won't be around the neck because Volk doesn't have one of them, does he? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I'm, I, I might have. I, I agree with the Makachev win, but I don't know if it'll be a sub mm. because May he had his head squeezed off. Mm. He had his head squeezed off and he was squirming. He had his legs flying up in the air, flapping, <laughs> and he still ain't tapping. Yeah, but the oh, mate, I'd, 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 I'd think the, the the neck is probably worse at some point because sometimes arm break, like you know you're in that position, it's probably gonna break your arm anyway. No, I think like you when you're going out, that's like, oh, am I ever gonna wake up again? Nah, no. <laughs> I'm not scared about getting choked out. Any fighter would rather get choked out than their arm broken or. Because yeah, I suppose, yeah. To be fair, every fight, every fight I've mean, ever asked mm. was probably said yeah. the same thing. But you know, an arm break that's six months to heal. Choking out, you get cleared in nine weeks. Like it's not bad getting choked out. Elbrook loves getting choked out. Yeah, <laughs> choked out by Gillian <laughs> Dennis in the lead up to yeah. the fight. That was fucking. And mental. She loved it. Yeah, and she told she told everyone she thought it was like MDMA. <laughs> I, I, I want to get choked. <laughs> no, <I'm>, yeah, <laughs> they fucking put a guillotine on me right now. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm going Islam decision. I think Volk. Bolt's going to hurt him bad, I think. In the first two rounds, I think Bolt's going to get close to finishing him. Sort of gas himself out, just going hell at the lever and then... Oh, well, we don't often kind of... see him gas, mind. No, nah, but it's just... I don't think he'll gas. I think... Just, just... He'll get to a position where he can't get Makachev off, off of him in every position. Like, yeah. In the first yeah, fight... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first fight, he started to break Like, frustration, yeah. almost, yeah. You'll see him kind of, Frustration like, sits, it sits all the time. in, and just, you just... When you're... When, the, when that happens, and you're just so frustrated with someone who is constantly doing mm. the same shit with you, you almost forget yeah. the way to break it down. Yeah. Like, completely. I've had it... And that's not just in fighting. That's in everyday life. Yeah. Like, if you get frustrated with one thing, the rest of the, rest of the shit that you're supposed to do around mm. you just breaks down. That's but, why. That's why keeping a calm and composed mind is the best in any and situation. And then Volk is also probably one of the best fighters that we've ever seen. Well, he's keeping those composed, incredible. calm in those moments. Man, and he's fucking five foot ten, and he used to weigh nah, he's three hundred five, maybe he's four. Yeah. And he used to weigh like three hundred pounds, man. Not literally, but <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, Islam decision after Volt hurts him, kind of, and then Islam kind of rides rides up Comes the position, on the, yeah. and wins the last two rounds. After maybe, maybe it will be two going into the fifth, and then Makachev wins the last round. That's how I see it. I can see that. I could also see him just go for that elbow. That arm, but that arm, elbow. Uh, yeah, that, 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 uh, Volt will probably still let him rip it off. I don't see Volt Volk, happening. Yeah, yeah, Volt will let him rip it off. Yeah. He does not care, mate. But he wants to fight in January, so he probably won't. Uh, that, that, that's not why I think Armbar really, but I don't think it's because of the elbow. I think that could have an impact, but I think he's going to go for an arm lock. Yeah. Like, I, I think from that top position, either that or just see, I think he's going to go for a joint submission. I mean, we saw. Islam, Islam was in. He had his back for four minutes and couldn't even get close to lick, locking him around his neck. So, I think if it is a sub, I think it will be, be more of a sort of leg lock, arm lock, sort of, maybe even just like a neck crank, squeeze his chin off. Well, maybe. I mean, but yeah. So, Harry, what's your final prediction to wrap it up? To wrap it up, uh, we can't actually wrap it up on that. But I'll give my prediction and then I'll tell you why we can't wrap it up on that. Okay. Um. Because there, there's specifically something you said you wanted to bring up, but you haven't yet. Well, I forgot. So yeah. So <laughs> my prediction, my prediction is, um, Amakshev, because he's just it's it's coming on a full camp. Mm. Um, he's the bigger guy. Volk could quite easily do it, but Makachev, I think, is just going to be more ready, and I don't think he's willing to let go of his belt just yet. Yeah, uh, I think I remember why we can't wrap it up now. I just want to briefly, me and Harry spoke about the Tyson Fury and Garnier. Yes, fight. we did. Thank you. I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> and me and Harry are both interested to see. It's obviously, we think you'll probably pick Tyson Fury, but 
you, you want to know your actual yeah. yeah we want to know your actual your thought on the fights and how how, how you think it's going to play out well i think this is a really good matchup mm. i think that this isn't like a mcgregor mayweather matchup i mean it is to an extent but it's not it's very different um i think that it's going to be so interesting to see how Ngarlo does in boxing. Tyson Fury, he's a heavy hitter. He's so technical as well, though. And for someone his size, the way he moves in a boxing mm. ring, you wouldn't think that looking at him. you think, you know, just not that at all, really. Um, I think that Tyson Fury takes it. Yeah. Uh, I think Ngarlo could finish him. Mm. Maybe. 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 The, maybe thing, the, the major thing is, is, Fergal, the major thing is, is Ty, um, Ngarlo, in in UFC... He has always used boxing way more than he's used any other thing. He's looked more like a boxer in most of his UFC fights than he has an MMA yeah. fighter. You know, it's not boxing. If Jake Paul's taught us anything, that his UFC fighters cannot box. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the one thing. But the thing, we've never seen we've never seen a heavy one of the heavier lot go into it because yes. a lot of the heavy a lot of the heavier UFC fighters are box like mm. boxing. Um, orientated. orientated, yeah. So, Fergal, I was more going down the road is how happy are you for him going to kind of shove his middle finger up to the UFC and get this fight? Yeah. So, it's one of these things um, Ngarnu did do a lot to try and get better treatment mm. overall for the UFC and uh, it's interesting because for a for a fight for it to be made... Um, the, the UFC itself it, it's not something which obviously we talk about a lot but um, it's a it's a business mm. and it's a business we don't understand so we're not going to go into it but um, it's it's interesting really and it is, it is a bit of a power move mm. to, because Nganu is also somebody which uh, letting go of or having leave your organisation is a bit it hurts yeah. it's a big deal and it's a big impact I don't feel like this is going to set a precedent or anything I don't think that we're going to see a massive influx of top fighters leaving because at the UFC, although they talk about fighter pay and whatnot, I also feel like a lot of that isn't true to what well, actually is. I feel like a lot of these top level fighters, I know that wasn't what Ungarni was about, mm. but a lot of these top level fighters are earning such good money, there's literally no benefit to yeah. them moving anywhere else other mm. than that. Even PFL, the top, top fighters are making more than these PFL fighters. So um, it's a power move and it is a. It's interesting, really. It's hard to comment because unless you know how the UFC works, you can't really comment because you don't know about the ins and outs. Although some of the stuff which is said doesn't sound great for an organization mm. outside, it's also important to remember there are so many UFC fighters on that roster. A lot well, of them get paid, but they get paid because they do. Let's be real. We, Although we might not know how the business is run, we know the UFC do some scummy things. <laughs> yeah. And we saw it with the Mark Hunt thing. Usada was meant to be in them, and they just let Brock Lesnar go in and as roided as he could, and there's still a lawsuit now because of that. And uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened like that. So I am happy to see Ngarni just sort of get that win over the UFC and show other fighters. I'm I'm happy that he got the the, the win over the UFC and it's benefited him mm. more than more than it's benefited them 100. percent But the, at the end of the day, um, it could influence a lot more of the UFC fighters to leave. Mm. So the UFC probably do have to step their fucking game up yeah. and start doing something about the fighter pay and the conditions and the medical care mm. and all of that because it clearly hasn't been done before. Mm. Whereas it's been brought to everyone's attention now and if it doesn't get sorted, we're going to see some quality fighters leave. Yeah. And, you know, how everyone was good when so I left. So it wasn't good for us or the UFC or maybe just good for Ngannou. We've been going for a long while now, an hour and 20 minutes. That just shows how excited we were for the card. Um, we had some other good things to talk about as well. But we'll be back next week. I think we'll be back on the Tuesday. Um, a decent card to talk about, about. We hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all the socials. Share us around with your friends. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed.